Welcome back to ASSC Chemistry. We're going to take you through as briefly as possible, but as efficiently as I can, the difference between a strong and a weak acid. And I'm also going to mention bases in this as well, mainly looking at alkalis in that discussion. Now, this is in line with the OCRA specification, and we're not 100% sure what kind of detail they want you to go in for this anymore, but we do know that they now bring up strong and weak acids as part of the AS, and this was not in the original specification when it changed in 2015. So, first off, what is an acid? Well, an acid is a proton donor. That's really important. You need to know that acids give up H plus ions, and so they will give them away to something that's going to accept them, something like a base. So for instance, alkalis contain OH minus ions, and that means they're gonna readily accept protons from acids and form water, H2O. So anything that donates a proton, anything that donates an H plus ion is considered an acid. Now, the difference though between strong and weak acids, just over here, let's just get, this is a, the chemistry department selfie stick, I would like to point that out, yeah. Now, the difference between a strong and a weak acid, strong acids, they dissociate completely. So as you can see in the equation just there for the HCl, for every one molecule of HCl I have, that's gonna split up and give away a proton, which is the important bit of the acid, and a Cl minus, which could then pick up a metal ion or an ammonium ion become a salt. And so remember that you do need to know what that salt is, that's really important. Now, with the actual acid itself, as you can see, like I just said, for every one HCl, I get an H+, which means it dissociates completely, saying that the HCl is strong. Now, other examples of strong acids are nitric acid, which is another uh, monobasic acid, which is HNO3. That term monobasic is really an A2 level term. I'm going to use it now because you might be watching this in your second year. Uh, H2SO4 is also an example of a dibasic acid. It's a strong dibasic acid, that's sulfuric acid. And the final one that you need to know the formula of is phosphoric acid, H3PO4, and that's a tribasic acid. Now, what you've then got as a comparison is what a weak acid is. And a weak acid is essentially organic acids, so carboxylic acids, they only dissociate partially. Which means, as you can see here, this is uh, ethanoic acids, nearly forgot then. This is ethanoic acids equilibrium to release its proton. Now, you don't need to know exclusively how far that equilibrium, like the magnitude of that equilibrium, what it is at AS level, but you've got this thing called Ka in the upper six, which will help you out with that. There's loads of videos on that available if you want them. Now, here what you can see is not every molecule of ethanoic acid is going to dissociate to release an H+, and that's what's really important here. You only get a partial dissociation because of that equilibrium feature. It's about five in every 1,000 or so. And so we describe a weak acid as dissociating partially. You may see some examples call it dissociating slightly, but we're sticking with OCR's description here because these are all OCR videos. So I want to make sure that you're using their language and they prefer you to say dissociates partially. So we're going to keep in touch with that. Now you do need to actually know as well some examples of strong and weak bases. So I just want to take you back over here. Now, if you're looking at strong bases, these are like alkalis, and so anything with hydroxide in the name, like sodium hydroxide or barium hydroxide, different formula, but still, that's going to be a strong base. But then a weak base, the only example you need to be aware of is ammonia. So ammonia is the only one, NH3, it's the only one you need to be aware of. And that's really important because actually, don't forget, salts can contain ammonium ions, which is NH4+. And so being aware of that nitrogen-containing formula is always really important. I hope that clears up the difference for you between a strong and a weak acid and a strong and a weak base as well, I suppose. Until next time, happy revising.